Good morning church, it's so good to see you here online. We're so glad that you could join us for our Sunday service. And before we go into the worship, I would like to read you a scripture. It's from Psalm 34. I will exalt the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called and the Lord hurt him. He saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and he delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who take refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you his holy people and those who fear him lack nothing. And I don't know about you, church, but I am standing on that word today, and I will be standing on that as we worship this morning. Yeah, let's just engage with the worship wherever we are, whether you're at home in your living room, you're in the garden, or out on your daily walk. Let's just engage and be in his presence and worship him with all of our hearts. So, let's go. Oh 
So it's giving time. Giving's a bit different right now, but we've got Church Suite. And um, if you've not given on Church Suite before, I hate technology and I worked out how to give on Church Suite inside of like 30 seconds. So honestly, if I can do it, I'm sure you'll you'll do it much better. Uh, so we were chatting about giving a bit, weren't we? Yes, we were. And uh, for me, tithing is a privilege. It's not an obligation. I know some people have different opinions about it. But for me, tithing is definitely a privilege. Yeah, amen. Like Jesus said, actually, that, that, that your money, giving your money and, and stewarding that is like the least important part of your relationship with God. And, and he inferred, like, if you can't get this bit right, then how you how's God going to bless you and, and trust you to hold like a deep prophetic anointing or a healing anointing if he can't even trust you to like open your wallet eh? yeah for me tithing is is just saying thank you to god for providing everything for me because my job my career everything that i have comes from him my health to do my job comes from him so when i i receive my salary uh my automatic response is say thank you lord and he is my 10 percent of that just a way of saying thank you because you provided for me and if it wasn't for you i wouldn't have this money i wouldn't have this job i wouldn't have this blessing so thank you yeah and you like where we started going out andrea found out i wasn't tired i was still giving like i love to give i've always loved to give and that's just a normal like as you come close to jesus you want to give because he's a giving god and you become like him but i kind of stopped tithing and you were like what you don't tithe what the flip <laughs> yeah. and i was in like loads of debt at the time and you were like well just try it just try tithing and i was like Ehh. so i did i tried tithing and the month i tried tithing um my overdraft was 10 percent of what it had always been if you get that and then the month after that it gone and like pretty you know god rescued me from a enormous overdraft that i was in all the time it was amazing so yeah praise god yeah i think for most of people they they really they are really attached to their wallet and uh, i think diving for them is just like oh my goodness i'm giving this money uh, you know to the church and in fact you're not yeah. and uh, david says in the in one of the songs that like he says that i'm not gonna give you anything that doesn't cost me anything and uh so for us giving sometimes is a sacrifice and uh but i would encourage you to do that because god wants to bless you amen amen and post your victory stories of of finance in the comments god bless you we love you we miss you we're praying for you all so a massive thank you to ian and andrea for bringing that encouraging word on tithing and bringing your offerings Today we're going to start a brand new series. Before we got into all of this, the craziness that is COVID-19 and the crisis that we're facing, we were going through the book of Mark in a series that we call Time to Sow, looking at how Jesus had compassion on people all around him to bring this good news message and hope and restoration to all mankind. We're going to move on from that and we're going to start looking at the book of Acts. So, let's dive in, shall we? We know, don't we, that we've all faced a massive change recently. We've faced change as a church, we've faced change as a nation, and we're facing change as a society globally because of all what's happening in and around our lives. Most of us, when asked, we probably say that we don't like change. You know, this is the question that we need to really wrestle to the ground. But truth be told, actually, most of us do appreciate change, just only when it's a welcome change that we ourselves long to embrace. So today's message, I'm tightening it, embrace the change. Because I really believe that as a church, as a society, Across the world, we are going to be facing unprecedented changes in our lives, and we need to be ready for it when the time comes. So, change can be a good thing in our lives. We embrace positive changes in our lives. We've just established that, but you know how? I mean, changes in our job roles when we've been seeking new forms of employment or 
pursuing a new career or setting up our own business. This is a positive change in our lives, one that we want to embrace and we pursue with our whole hearts. We also like changes in um, familial relationships, you know, when we're trying to have a family or, and we have a baby in our lives. This is a big change, something that we've wanted from within and so we embrace that sort of change as well. And then we also embrace a sort of change where we see it in societal laws. I'm sure that most of us have appreciated that majority of the nation have adhered to the social distancing rules. Yes, we're facing a second stint of lockdown, but because of the faithfulness and obedience of the general public, we just, I think we should appreciate the fact that maybe this next period of lockdown may be the end of the tight restrictions. It might not be. Hey, if you're watching this in the future and I was completely wrong, you can call me out on it. But right now, from where we're standing and the perspective we have, we're just entering a second stint of lockdown in our nation. And so hopefully we'll be able to um, flatten out that curve and come out the other side of this by implementing some smaller changes that enable us to get back to life in some sort of normality. Anyway, that's just where we are as a culture. So people are looking for change all over the place. Uh, in research for this, I looked online and I saw in change.org, um, which is a, an organization that facilitates petitions for different kinds of uh, societal law changes or just trying to make the policymakers change their minds on certain stances that they have. It's across the world, but 361 million people have signed up for petitions on change.org. That tells me that people are looking for change in and around their lives, change for the better. We want to see our world improve, don't we, and get better as we move along. And so things like this pandemic, they might put a halt on it slightly, but maybe there's greater change to come as a result of this. Small changes in our lives can lead to a huge difference. I listen to a lot of podcasts. I'm a postman and when I'm out on delivery, I've got my earbuds in and so I listen to a lot of stuff and hopefully I learn something along the way. Just want to encourage you that if you're not a podcast listener, there's some really good ones out there. If you're interested, send me a direct message. I'd love to like put forward my views and, and thoughts on what are some of the best podcasts to listen to. But anyway, listening to podcasts, uh, I've learned uh, a couple of stories, and so one of these stories about change was in 2011, London faced some rioting. Uh, maybe you can cast your mind back and remember that time. It was a dark day in London's history. However, on the other side of that, policymakers and organisations decided to see what small changes they could make that might affect people's behaviour in a positive way. And they found out that by painting the shutters on shop windows um, when the shops were shut in light and friendly colours and tones and with murals. One of my favourites was a, a shopkeeper in Woolwich who had painted the outside of his shutter um, with baby faces on. Well, in time, this meant that there was a 24% decrease in antisocial behaviour and crime in that area. Now, do the pictures by themselves mean that there was a decrease in this behaviour? Or well, maybe not. There's many more factors that come into play. However, I reckon we can attribute a large proportion of that 24% to the changes in the shutters, bringing the messages of uh, smiling babies and hope and bright colours and, and fun back into a community has had its impact. So these small changes can have quite a significant impact in and through our lives. But in order to change ourselves, we need to recognise our motivations. It's really easy to affect change when we have this intrinsic motivation, this thing from within ourselves that wants and desires the change to happen. However, it's really difficult for us to affect change when Actually, it's somebody from the outside or something from the outside coming in and trying to force change upon us. You could say that, hey, if you want to make a change in your life as a result of this message and you think that's great, brilliant. 
But if you're going to change something just because someone like me has said something to you, maybe that change won't last quite so strong. You have to want to do it. And I think most of us recognize this, actually, that if we have a desire to change and to make a difference in our lives and the way that we behave, that is always going to be a good thing, right? And so the best kind of change happens, in my view, when God actually puts a new desire, a new dream, a fresh vision in our hearts. And it's really powerful. It's way more powerful than just wanting to go on a diet to lose weight. It's way more powerful than just wanting to get fit so we can look good. It's way more powerful than setting up a budget just to be financially stable. All of these things are good things. But if the motivation from within us or is coming from without of us, people say negative things to us and so we think we'd better make the change because of the outside influence, it's not going to last quite as long. But when God gives us a divine word, a revelation from heaven, if you will, that is when the most powerful sorts of change can really happen. I want to get into the story now that I want to speak about, and this can be found in the book of Acts. Now, just to give you a bit of context for it, for those of you that are watching in, and maybe you're not church people, but you're interested, and so you're seeking some answers to life, the book of Acts is the second of a two-part series written by a guy called Luke, who was a doctor in the first century. And he methodically and systematically interviewed people and had his own experiences and he collated all of this information and compiled it for his benefactor, a guy whose name was Theophilus. So that Theophilus had a record of the things that Jesus did through the book of Luke in your Bible, and the things that Jesus continued to do through the book of Acts. And this is where we find ourselves today, wanting to look at the book of Acts and seeing how Jesus instituted the church to make great change in our society. So, are we ready to dive in? I hope so. In Acts chapter one, it says this. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Really important point. To remember. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? You see, they wanted change. They expected change. They thought that Jesus was going to usher in a, a new kingdom. That for the last several hundred years, they, they thought that God had left them. But now was the time that that God, through Jesus, was going to usher in his sovereign rule and reign once again. And they were asking Jesus what his plans were. You know, Jesus, what are you going to do? We've seen you die on the cross. We've seen, and this is what we celebrated at Easter, that Jesus died on the cross. And then on the third day, they witnessed him rise again from the dead. And they saw him after that, thinking that, do you know what? All hope was lost when he died on that cross. Everything was over. That this messianic age, this time when Jesus was going to bring restoration to the nation of Israel and take it away from the grasp of the Roman rule, that this was going to happen now because he's resurrected. He's back with us. Our, our king, our general is going to start a revolution. But that's not quite what Jesus had in mind. But they're asking him what his plans are. And Jesus had prepared his disciples all through the book of Luke and the other gospel accounts that we see how Jesus did and said things that were preparing his disciples for the change that was about to happen. But they hadn't quite grasped that yet. They weren't really understanding fully what it was that Jesus was trying to do at the time. And so, moving on from Acts 6, it says, he said to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you, 
You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. This is how change was going to happen. By God slowly preparing the hearts and minds of his followers uh, until one day they can actually see their part and be obedient to the heavenly call. And then God empowers them with the tools they need to accomplish his plans in the earth. And after this, it says that Jesus, he was taken up before their very eyes and a cloud hid him from their sight. This wasn't what they expected the change to look like. They expected Jesus to be leading them physically on the earth to bring about this restoration. But that's not what happened. What happened was he had prepared them for a long time. And then he tells them, and he tells them his plans because they asked. And he says to them, wait here, something is going to happen. Something's going to happen that's going to equip you and enable you to affect the change in the world that my desire and my plan and purposes for your lives is going to bring about this change. And so they hear this and then he goes up into heaven and this shifts the paradigm in their minds. They're thinking, what just happened? He's left us again. We've seen him beat death and sin on the cross at Easter, but what's this all about now? He's just gone. And for the people there and for the people reading this, you know, your mind goes back to a previous time when Elijah, an Old Testament, a prophet, he ascends into heaven in the view and, and the witness of Elisha. And so this is where their heads would have gone. But he'd been preparing them. And so often for us, God has been preparing us for change to happen in our lives and for other people. We get really caught up, don't we, with my plans. I have my plans, I have my dreams, I have my ambitions. Sometimes we get so caught up in that that we fail to ask what his plans are. To get on our knees and pray and say, Lord, what are your plans? What do you want to accomplish in this earth? I might partner in with that and see change happen in a good and positive way that's going to bring a blessing for the many and not just for the few. We need to be a people that don't get caught up with my plans and ask what it is that he wants for us and for others. Whatever change is happening in your life right now, God has been preparing you for it. Those thoughts that you had back then when life was full of busy, worry and hurry, those thoughts that you used to have of, I need to just slow down a little bit. Life's too fast. I need to find a way to cut something out and just, and just chill and, and find a, a better rhythm for my life. I need to get that work-life balance in check and in order. I, I need to be able to spend more time with my family because my family is really important to me and, and I know that I'm not doing as much as I could I'm not spending as much time with my spouse as I know I ought to and I'm not investing in my children's lives in, in the way that I know that they want me to. I might be able to buy them stuff to entertain them but I'm not spending the time with them that, that they really crave and desire. Or those thoughts that oh, I've been wanting to learn a new skill, play a musical instrument, learn a language. I, I want to take up a new hobby of photography or filmography or, or learn what Adobe Photoshop has to offer. Whatever these thoughts were, now is a time where life has slowed down a little bit, where we do have maybe a bit more mental bandwidth and a bit more space in our day to be able to invest wisely. See, God's put these desires in your heart and now is the time that he's empowering you to start to see these desires fulfilled. That you might just become the person that he has always intended for you to be. We just need to take a step back 
Stop thinking about ourselves so much and ask him, Lord, what are your plans for my life? What is your desire for this neighbourhood, community, nation, world, that we might partner with that and work together with our Heavenly Father to bring about this positive and good change. Now is the time to put these things into practice. To ask Him and to wait for the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Or maybe you already know it. Maybe you know the change that you need to make and you just have to do it. Maybe God has been nudging you and speaking to you over time. Or maybe with this bit of extra time that you've had, you've been able to spend time in prayer and seek him. That he's been talking to you and he's saying, now is the time to act. Now is the time to do it. But there's going to be a change in the world to come. There's going to be a change for us to come as a local church, as a society. And whatever acts are going to happen, God's going to prepare you for that too. Maybe now is a time of preparation for you, for what's going to come next. Maybe now is a time for you to be reflecting and thinking and praying and asking God what your role is going to be once life continues back to the way that we expect it to go. Because it's going to be different. And what new things are you learning now that are going to propel you into your new future? We can never predict the future and we can't be sure of very much. But as a wise man once said, the things that we can be sure of are taxes and death. But change is something that we can expect. It's going to happen. We don't know what it's going to look like exactly, but maybe now is the time. Now is the time to be thinking about and preparing ourselves. What would we like our lives to look like moving forwards? How would we like our spiritual life to look like moving forwards? Maybe now is the time where we can start to implement those habits. Those habits that are going to last us a lifetime maybe. That are going to deepen our spiritual faith. That are going to deepen our relationships. Even if we are building relationships through Zoom calls or Facebook or however that might be. How can we implement these habits now? to be champions of others in the future and to build our own lives right now. How can we use online tools? How can we communicate through non-contact methods? How can we create and innovate to stop the kids from just exploding during this time? How can we bless others in a real and sincere way? These are questions we need to be thinking about right now. And maybe by thinking these things right now, they are going to get us ready for the changes for the future. Maybe they're going to be the things, the catalysts, that are going to build our lives once again. But like I said before, none of what we're experiencing now is new to the world. We've faced pandemics, epidemics, crises, wars, famines and pestilences before. And the church has always been there. And it's always risen to the challenge. And my challenge to you is, are you up for the challenge? Can you see a role and a purpose for yourself in the challenge to come? How are we as a church going to affect positive change in the lives of people who might not see this time as an opportunity, but are desperate, that are hurting, that are suffering, whose lives might have been impacted in a very direct way 
because of the virus that's happening. How can we use the tools and methods at our disposal to be the church, to be available to God, that he might just work and partner with us in this earth, that we might just see his plans and his purposes come to pass. This is the challenge. And in the past, we have examples from the Bible how Nehemiah led change during a time when the nation of Israel had crumbled. But he rallied his troops, he gathered them together and they worked hard and they worked on biblical principles in order to restore the city of Jerusalem and in turn rebuild the economy of the local area. We'll need this kind of leadership again as we move through this change. Are you up for the challenge? We saw how Daniel led through the biggest change in history at that time. How the nation of Israel was sent into exile by the Medo-Persians and Daniel rose through the ranks of government to be a leader, to take his people into a place of a spiritual maturity we're going to need that kind of leadership once again. And of course, we saw the change that Jesus made as he enters earth from heaven and he comes and sets a tone and an example for us and principles for living that changed the whole world, turned it upside down. That if you live in the West, Almost everything that you experience is through a filter of what Jesus did. It's incredible. And we need to follow the example set by him, his compassion for people, his steadfastness, the knowledge of his plan and purpose and fulfilment of the mission for which he was born for. These are the sorts of things that we, as his followers, need to embrace. So are you ready to embrace the change? Are you ready to step up to a new level of challenge? Are you ready to be prepared by God and to be empowered by him, by the infilling of his spirit and by gaining wisdom and revelation that we might just be the change makers of this earth in the best possible way? Thank you so much for taking the time out to watch this and to be a part of Church Online. Hey, so we hope that you found that message encouraging, inspiring and challenging. If you have any questions that you'd like to ask us about the message or about anything that we're doing here as a local church, you can direct message us through our Facebook page, our Instagram or go online to www.thehubchurchstortford.com Dot com and you will find an email link there at hello at the Hub Church Stortford and drop us a line. We'd love to connect with you and talk about any issues that you're facing and if you'd like prayer for anything you can always follow me James Baxter as I host a nightly prayer meeting at 7pm and I would love to pray for your needs and as we gather together online during this season. So we hope that you're staying safe we hope that you're staying well and above all, we hope that you are staying strong in the faith and that we are praying for those around us, that people who are feeling discouraged and are struggling and suffering during this time can be blessed by the local church. Amen. So until next time, God bless you.